Hi guys, Sophia Nicole here with HHB Media, and I am sitting with the beautiful, talented actress, writer, and director, Nadej Pata. I got it right? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Such yeah. a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So guys, I'm going to be interviewing her today because her film was entered into a really fun, fantastic film festival, the Conch Shell International Film Festival, and we want to tell you all about it. Her film is, is titled A Paris Blues in Harlem. And just to start out, are you from Harlem? What's about Harlem? Tell us a little bit about where you're from, that is. Okay, so I am from Brooklyn, New York, and that's where I grew up. That's where I was raised. And then I moved in Harlem in my adult years, starting in my 20s. And then I moved to California, then came back to Harlem. Harlem just holds a special place for me because of the rich history. And then plus I moved there was easier because what I did as an artist, I was always in the city. So it was time for me to leave Brooklyn, especially the part where I live was about an, almost an hour ride to get to the city. Wow. Wow. Okay. I love it. And so uh, being that you're from the city, this mm -hmm. particular story, it rings true to you. It's a true story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a loosely based um, true story about Samuel Hargris, who is the owner of Paris Blues in Harlem, which he opened in 1969 and still exists till, till this day. So it has been through various, um, I don't know if you want to say errors, but for the drug era in the 70s and now to gentrification. And so there's a lot of history that revolves around Paris Blues and what existed then, what exists now, and just the political climate. And I thought he was such a local hero that people needed to know about because it's not just a jazz club, but it's also a place where he cooks seven days a week from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. You can eat for free and you could come over and eat and you don't have to buy a drink. So it was a safe haven if someone needed to drop off a child and a social worker or a police officer needed to pick up the child. His spot was that place fundraising for politicians, fundraising for anyone for free. He didn't even charge you for the space. And political events occurred there, uh, free Thanksgiving dinner. So he was an activist in his own right, which he didn't realize. Right. And I, he was such a community person that he bridged the gap between the old Harlem and the new Harlem. And I said, you know what? We need to tell a story about you because now I think your story needs to be told where people know you on a global level. You have right. the legacy, Paris Blues and Lennox Lounge, Lennox Lounge, which we lost, the community lost because this is a, a well, a famous jazz club where Billy Holidays and all the great legends have been through the Lennox Lounge. And here's Paris Blues. He owns the jazz bar. He owns the residential property. He brought air rights and is worth well over $10 million. And I was like, wow, you, you know, he was a very smart businessman. So not only was he sitting on history, but this wealth that he was building on um, the legacy for his family. So I wanted to tell his story. Wow. Kudos to you for that. It's definitely a story that needed to be told. So, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So um, just to do a little background on being a filmmaker, the industry, <laughs> the arts, how long have you been in it? Tell us a little bit about yourself. What got you started? Well, what got me started is my first artistic discipline is dance. And so I'm trained in modern. I'm trained in ballet. I've been with modern dance ensembles. I created my own as a youth, right? Mm -hmm. So the point of choreography that I had co-choreographed with another dancer, um, we got invited to the United Nations to present in our teams. Okay. So my artistic discipline began there. I also wanted to explore I was in music and chorus in high school and dance, but I also wanted to explore um, acting, but they conflicted. The acting department conflicted with the dance department because they require a lot of your time. That's right. So I was able to take acting classes, but not be a part of the company. And then when I reached this crossroad, because my family's from the Caribbean and they, you know, that's not a real career. Your artistic 
like, what is art? Oh, that's a hobby, right? It's a hobby because you're going to be a doctor. <laughs> right, right. You know, right. They're, just, they're deciding your destiny for you. So, right. so of course, with pressure, um, I decided to major in psychology, but each, the school I went to, I mean, it had a dance department and I joined as a hobby Okay. <laughs> while I was majoring in psychology and then I went to grad school and just hit a crossroad when I was getting my master's in psychology and I said mm. it took a class where we had to role play mm -hmm. the patients and we had to guess the psychological disorder and usually what happens is when it's your when someone when it's someone's turn we'll we'll, we'll guess and we'll assess and when it was my turn, you know, they said I'd need an Oscar for my performance. And it was that moment because I was very depressed, very depressed. I was in this crossroad, this really dark phase in my life of just not having clarity of where am I going and what am I doing? Right. Knowing that I needed to go back to the arts. And yeah. then it took that class to say, okay, and then I enrolled myself in an acting school and I started to do theater. I didn't tell my family anything. And then it was about two years later, I invited my mom and I said, this is what I do. <laughs> Were they blown away? Um, yeah, but it's like, <laughs> well, what do you do with your masters? Mm -hmm. it's like psychology can, could go across everything, you know? Right. And right. it served me well in terms of understanding character development. Right. And psychology is really life, understanding people and the human mm -hmm. dynamics. So it really, really served me well, um, having to detour from that path and yes. then coming back to the art. So it's like I acquired another tool to add to what I do as an artist. Right. And so I think now it's, <laughs> it's like she's not wavering, right? Right. And, um, and, you know, this, well, you don't want security. And I'm like, uh, look at this lockdown. Nobody has security. <laughs> People exactly. lose their jobs, right? So I think once she, once they saw, like, I wasn't wavering and this is what I'm doing, it's yes. like, oh, my daughter's an actress. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Do what you love, honey. I'm like, yeah. A <laughs> very so, smart actress. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. So yeah. it took it took going through a dark phase mm -hmm. and then coming out and then that light bulb hit and it's just like this is the path you need to go through and trust it. Right. Trust it. Trust your yeah. passion. Trust yeah. the gift. Trust the gift that is inside of you because your gifts make a way for you. You mm -hmm. know. And if you really mm -hmm. utilize your gifts, they will make a way for you. So you don't have to mm -hmm. be scared and put yourself in a box somewhere where you don't mm -hmm. belong. Yeah. You know, just yeah. trust trust your gifts to make a yeah. way. And that's what you're doing. And it's wonderful, you know. Thank you. And you're Thank you're beginning to see uh the fruits from your labor. Yeah, yeah. And you know, for any artist, I would say to stay the course, um, mm -hmm. define it for yourself. Don't worry about these limitations that they put, whether it's, you know, gender, color, age, you hold steadfast and you'll be guided. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so where do you see yourself going from here? If you could <laughs> say, you know, this is what I want my legacy, my mark to be. This is what I want to do. What is that? For me, uh, my mark is being this creative light in motion, bringing light and shedding light to these stories that are untapped. Mm. That elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about. I want to talk about it. Okay. Bringing truth to the story, really delving deep into the soul of that human experience that mm -hmm. we go through, that hero's journey, mm -hmm. conquering all these um obstacles and failures and then becoming victor at the end yeah so that's the legacy i want to leave i want to leave is to really tell the truth because my my art films my production company stands for manifesting okay. and artist and and artistic truth so not only the stories that i have in my head that i want to tell but also opening that opportunity being the gateway right. for 
other artists to have that opportunity to be able to tell their stories in the most truthful way and it's not tampered because you know with our stories we got to be real yeah that's right it, it it's gets it is not told right for mm-hmm. sensationalism or mm-hmm. for whatever it's always even the historical stories it's always like they didn't tell the truth right right they sensationalize it or they just butchered it right. so i think I want to be the one that have the hands on it and have the sensitivity to the, our stories, right. our people's stories. And we're more than just what Hollywood wants to depict us. Right. I want to show other angles that they're not showing and say, mm-hmm. this is who we are. Mm-hmm. I love right. that. Yeah. I love that. So how can we reach you? If, if you know, we want to reach out to you. People who watch this interview, they say, oh, I need her for this. I need her for that. How can we reach you? Instagram, like whatever you want to give. Yeah, the best way, I have a website and okay. has a contact list and just go that way. Um, social media, yeah, follow me. I follow mm-hmm. you back. Yeah. Or Messenger is a little tough because I think I get lost in that because I have emails and texts. That's enough. <laughs> Right. Let's start with your social media. Where yeah. if they want to go to your page, if they want to follow you and your growth, okay. where can they yeah. go? They can go to Nadesh Pata. Um, that's where you'll find me in all, across all my social media platforms, which is spelled N-A-D-H-E-G-E, Pata, P-T-A-H. So whether it's Instagram, Facebook, they got me on TikTok. <laughs> I love it. What am I going to do out there? And you know what? I actually like it. I said, this is quite creative. In the yeah. just a couple of seconds. Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Nadej Patel. I made it very simple to, you know, for people to find me. No, I love it. Yeah. I so love I'm, it. Yeah. That's wonderful. Now, before we bring this wonderful interview to an end, um, mm-hmm. I want you to tell me in one sentence, uh-huh. you, describe you. One sentence. I told you I'm a creative light in motion. A creative light in motion. I love that. We're Mm -hmm. transferring darkness into light. Bringing the darkness into light. A truth teller. Truth teller. Well, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for, (laughs) you know, the public to see this film, you know. Thank you. You know, you know, it's really great to tell these stories. There's so many heroes that go unknown that people don't know anything about, but they've really made a mark and they've changed people's lives. And so this is just so wonderful. And he has, because I've seen him give jobs to people who were strung out on drugs and yeah. coming back. Mm-hmm. And he said, if you stay off drugs, I'll give you a job. And he would do that. Unfortunately, he transitioned last year oh. in April, caught up in the whole, whole seat of the lockdown, which I know wasn't going to serve him well because he, that club is his oxygen. Right. Getting up yeah. and managing the club and tourists coming in. It's such a popular place for tourists. Right. And right. Uh, um, he transitioned. He's never been sick. And it was unexpected. Yeah. So my job is, is to it carry. COVID related? Well, they say, but it's not. I know it's not. Um okay. But I know I'm carrying on the legacy to develop this further. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so it's going beyond just a short film. And I I like to see this legacy uh, continue in a series. And that's what um, we're working on. I love it. I love it. She's yeah. doing it. So Nadej Patois, I like to give kudos and applause. Pretty you know, <laughs> woman, a sister. Yeah. In film, yes. actress, yes. a director, talented, yes. a psychologist, so she can get in your head. <laughs> now I'll get you in the head with the films, girl. <laughs> you that's a part of psychology. I'm telling it you, is. you can use it through your art. You know and heal. And heal. No, that's right. I want to be a sage in my storytelling. Ooh. Yes. I don't want to be destructive. I want to be a sage. So even if there's those dark moments that the characters are journey going through that journey in the story, yes, then we're gonna end it with a sage, you know? Yes, 
Yeah. yeah. And uh, where else, if, if anyone needs to actually uh, watch the film and they're, they've missed the, the Kong International Film Festival, where else can they see this film? Okay, so they can either see it on the PBS platform because it was picked up by PBS. Okay. Um, for the 2019 PBS Film Festival. Okay. Comcast, it's on Comcast. And then they can, if you have Amazon Prime, it's on Amazon Prime also. Wonderful. So those, and that's those those Paris, the- Blues, and Harlem, everyone. Yes. Paris, yes. Blues, and Harlem. Well, it's been a pleasure. It has. It yes. has. And I hope when, you know, we're in LA, you're in New York, and then there's Atlanta, but I'm sure our paths will cross eventually. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be in California quite often. I'm just waiting for whatever the world needs to go through. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, I'm not traveling. Oh, no, I don't want to be stuck anywhere. Right. I'm a mother. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You and me both. Trust the process. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'll, I know it's late over there. Yes. So, and I appreciate the interview. And on behalf of HHB Media, we wish you all of the success, all okay. of the blessings. Thank you. God has for you and that the universe has for you. And likewise. Thank you, Nadesh. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you. <laughs> Bye-bye.